Hello friends, it's me. Today we're going to talk about a very strange and exciting instrument, one that's been part of my musical journey for many years now. I am of course talking about the banjo. However, since the banjo is most often seen in rural America, I don't want to be that guy sitting in an inner city studio in Stockholm lecturing people on American folk traditions. You know you're going to have to touch it at some point. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Well, then guess who's calling his agent, hmm? And that's why we now go live to our affiliate station, WKX, in Sierra Nuevo, Arizona, where we have banjo historian Maynard J. Humphreys III ready to talk to us. Maynard, are you there? I am. Good afternoon. And good afternoon to you. Now, what can you tell us about this thought-provoking instrument, the banjo? Well, the banjo is a rich and storied instrument, a product of pure musical hatred. Now, you see, it comes from Irish folk music, one of the least liked genres in the world. When you combine that with the fact that the um, banjo was made from the two least liked instruments in the least liked genre. The boron and the fife was uh, smashed together by angry pub patrons. And thus, evil was cast on this cursed land. But it's actually this animosity that has carried the instrument ever since. Where other instruments tend to favor uh, either an elegant melody, like uh, for example a noble cello. Or the rich chord of the grand forte piano. The banjo has instead opted for a thunderous and never-ending racket of the worst imaginable sounds known to science. Now the trick to playing the banjo is by cramming as many notes as humanly possible into the smallest measure of music. With complete disregard for such concepts as uh, rhythm, flow or even basic volume control. We can illustrate this with the classic lullaby Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. As we have the basic melody and harmony here on the guitar. Sounds empty, right? No, it doesn't. It sounds fine. But see, banjo players, they have a different opinion. Are you asleep yet? Okay then, so what part does the banjo play in an ensemble or a band? Well, in a way, it's treated a lot like microphone feedback in the budget concert venues. Yes, it does kill the vibe with its deafening noise, but despite all the modern science we have, we just can't seem to get rid of it. It's just a fact of life at this point. However, since the banjo is not a typical instrument here in Arizona, I don't want to be that guy sitting in my wicker chair with my PhD and sipping on a cool glass of mint iced tea. There. Lecturing you people on folk traditions. And that's why we now go live to our affiliate station, KLAF16, and the Fey Dodo Put Up Roast, where we have star anchorman and banjo aficionado, Jessup Cooter, ready to talk to us. Jessup, are you with us? And good afternoon to you. Now, what is it that you find so enchanting about the banjo, and how did you uh, start playing it in the first place? Right, well, fascinating stuff there. Now, uh, so I'm guessing, play something? Is that, could you, I mean, does he even talk? But, but, but is that a talk show? That sense? guy's kind of a douche, right? What did you call me? Oh, you want to go, is that it? You want to go? Oh, no!
to the studio. Yes, and we thank our reporters, Maynard J. Humphreys III and Jessup Cooter for that fascinating insight into, um, I mean, I'm getting to these hats. Is that what we're going for? Be sure to stick around after the break. We're looking at whether Bon Jovi can pronounce Bon Giorno, can play the banjo or likes anchovies. Our research says yes, no, and maybe. We'll tell you more right after these messages. And if you join us over on Channel 9, we'll be issuing a public apology, seeing as the banjo actually has African-American origins and not Irish, and that this program was actually just the same guy wearing three different outfits. After that, at 8pm, we'll see what those dastardly donkeys were up to this week. Shut her down. 